people truly understand the complications that can come from diabetes. Um, you know, you don't have to be perfect. I don't think there's anybody that's ever going to be perfect and have complete 100% control. You know, you're going to have times when you slip up and things are going to happen. We all know how difficult teenage years can be, not to mention those first few years out in the real world as a young adult. But did you know young people with a chronic illness have the greatest risk for a decline in their maintenance of their health and their health in general during those transitional years? Thank you for joining me for today's episode of Talking Health in the 406, where we're one community under the big sky. I'm Jennifer Vansicle, your host, longtime healthcare worker turned health educator. This is our second installment with Melissa House. Melissa is a type 1 diabetes survivor and double organ transplant recipient. She also happens to be the diabetes program manager for the state of Montana. And let's listen back into her story as she discusses her struggles and successes during those transitional years as a person with type 1 diabetes. So it sounds like in your younger years, you were learning how to control diabetes, how to live well with diabetes. And then tell me about your teenage years. Teenage years are hard for everyone. I can only imagine adding diabetes into the mix must have been interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I think those first few years after diagnosis was a lot of learning, a lot of growing, um, you know, figuring out how to manage things. And then you know, that high school time frame hit. Um, and like you said, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of changes going on. Um, the fitting in, you know, meeting new people, meeting new friends, gaining some independence. Um, and it was a struggle. It really was. The first few years of high school, you know, I can kind of say, and um, I'm sure my mom can back this up, but I kind of rebelled in, you know, taking care of myself. Um, did I completely give up? No, I can't say that I completely gave up, but were there missed doses of insulin? Sure. Um, there was occasions where it was like, oh, I haven't checked my blood sugar, you know, as frequently as maybe I, I should be. Um, but, you know, I tried not to let it get completely out of control. Um, things that I noticed was I had more sick days. Mm -hmm. Um, there was, you know, more time where I was sick. I had more ups and downs. So more low glucose, you know, and then yeah. drifting high. And so it was kind of that up and down, up and down. And what does a sick day look like for a person? Were you home vomiting or did you just have a headache or not feel well? What, what? I think it was a combination of all, just, you know, dependent on what was going on. If my blood sugar got high for a few days, you know, you run the risk of um, going into ketoacidosis, which is pretty Yikes. severe, yeah. um, you know, electrolytes and everything changing within the body. I did experience a couple of occasions of that where it started with what looked like, seemed like a stomach flu um, and ended up in the emergency room. I remember the one time you know, my blood sugar was 727. Um, and I was in and out of consciousness. Wow. Um, and this was probably, you know, one of the first serious episodes that I had. And it was the summer between um, my freshman and sophomore year, I think of high school. Um, so had a lot of changes. That yeah, year. a lot yeah. of changes. Yeah. Felt like it was the stomach flu. Um, and it just kind of led to being in the hospital um, on IV fluids and trying to get all of, you know, that figured out get on a new plan, a new, you know, kind of treatment plan and following through that. So, you know, there were times that things were really well and there were times that, you know, I struggled. I just wanted to be a normal teenage kid and not have to take the time to worry about it. Right. And diabetes and it, is a 24 seven chronic disease. That it you is. Have to tackle all the time. Yeah. It's incredible it, for a teenager to have to add that in. As well. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And, you know, just any normal teenager, what they're going through, you know, trying to find their place and who they are and, you know, where they fit. Um, and then you add a chronic condition on top of that just, I think, makes it, you know, even worse is, you know, just trying to figure out how you you deal with it. And, you know, if you don't have, you know, a lot of friends that know or understand, that makes it more difficult too. And I think things are different these days. Again, you know, diabetes is not as taboo when people talk about it and, you know, you know, some people just like, yeah, I have diabetes and this is me and it's a part yeah. of me. And, but you know, when I was in high school, 
that really wasn't the case. And today there's apps. You know, we have the continuous glucose monitors that can be just scanned by your phone. A lot of hands-on tools that yeah. can really, really help instead of having to stop, prick my finger, check my blood sugar, and go round and round. Right. Um, how was college then? Did you finally find that you kind of evened out and were doing better in college? Or how did how did that next transition in life go? Yeah, I think college was a turning point for me. Um, you know, the end of high school into college, I had really met some amazing friends that, you know, supported everything. They wanted to learn. They wanted to, you know, grow with me. And I think that transition from the end of high school into college was a really growing and learning experience for me. Um, you know, just the direction that I was going with where I wanted to go with my career. Um, I met my husband or my future husband at the time. And he was very interested and he wanted to learn and he wanted to be a part of that. So, you know, I was working at the clinic while I was going to college that where my provider was. So I was learning a lot there, um, you know, and just being able to kind of dive into it from a little bit different perspective from more of that clinical side, just gained my interest. Um, And this is when, you know, insulin pumps were starting to come out continuous glucose monitors, the first ones were coming out. And so I had the opportunity to kind of experience all of this and try it and see how it would fit for me and what that looked like. So um, I did a lot of things on diabetes for, you know, AMP classes and, you know, all of my classes, I incorporated what I was living with into my classes to help other people learn. And so it was a really kind of exciting opportunity. Um, as far as my, you know, overall well-being, it changed too drastically. My A1Cs, you know, now were like in perfect control. Um, my glucose levels were great. I wasn't seeing the ups and downs. I was healthier overall. So it was, it was a big transition. And I think for a lot of people, there comes a point when, you know, especially as a young person, there comes a point when you you hit that like stage and you're like okay I'm ready to make a change. It's mm-hmm. just like some if somebody's trying to lose weight or quit smoking Absolutely. or start exercising, you really have to want it. Yep, and you have to take it on yourself. You have to do it. Yeah. Exactly. You have to, you know, put in the effort. And you know, I think you mentioned earlier, you know, diabetes is 24/7 365 and so it's just putting in that effort. You right. know, there's hundreds of decisions you have to make throughout a day. So Yeah, I think college was a great learning opportunity, not just for, you know, starting my career and getting more independence, but, you know, taking care of myself and, you know, being, again, really stressing the importance of being an advocate. I don't know that all of my doctors liked me because I came in with a list of questions, but it was a way where it wasn't just that you get in and get out. Um, yeah. You know, yep. the doctor actually spent time answering my questions. So yeah. you advocated for your own care. You made sure your care happened. Right. Because you came with those questions, which is a great, great thing to remember. So was it always smooth sailing? Um, in our introduction, we introduced you as a double organ transplant recipient. Um, tell us about a little later in after your college years or end of the college years. How what else happened? What's the rest of your story? Yeah. Um you know, I think I've very, been very fortunate in my life and the things that have happened. Um, but I don't think people truly understand the complications that can come from diabetes. Um, you know, you don't have to be perfect. I don't think there's anybody that's ever going to be perfect and have complete 100% control. You know, you're going to have times when you slip up and things are going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't, especially when I was younger and growing up, the risk of complications was like, oh, that'll never happen to me. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, those things like that. So, you know, I really gained control in college. And like I said, that's when I met my future husband and we were together and he was a big part of, you know, growing and learning. And as I, you know, got out of college, moved away for the first time. So we both got jobs in Winnemucca, Nevada. Okay. So moved, Mm -hmm. you know, to Nevada. um, And now it was really of, okay, now you're kind of on your own. And and how do you, yeah, you know, you figured that, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm an adult now. I have to grow up and (laughs) manage things. (laughs) I'm an adult. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So things were fine at first. Um, You know, I had the insulin pump. I had the continuous glucose monitor. 
which funny story my husband made me get rid of because um, I became a control freak. And, um, you know, I couldn't have one little blip in my glucose waves that had to be a perfect straight line. And he finally hit it on me and said, no, no more of this. Um, but yeah, things were going well the first few years. Um, and I look back now and there were signs a couple of times when I was sick, mm. they had put me on different medications. And at the time I didn't ask questions, didn't know what they were all about, um, and what they were doing, um, a couple of times when I was sick, really dehydrated, you know, going through some things, um, you know, I didn't understand fully at the time what was going on mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. my body that, you know, diabetes is just not the pancreas and it, you know, there's a lot of other things, blood vessels and other organs that it affects. So didn't think much at the time. Um, work was great. I was busy loving my job, but it was a lot of early mornings. Uh, you know, I hopped on the bus to go to the mine site at uh, 5.40 in the morning. Sometimes I didn't get home till 10 o'clock at night. Wow. Uh, working on the ambulance, both of my husband and I were EMTs. So sometimes we would start our shift at 6.30 in the evening and work till midnight. Um, you know, and then if the, the, the tone went off at 11.58, we had to you go. Yeah. So sometimes it was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning we get home. So I thought it was just stress. Mm -hmm. um, I had really severe headaches um, and really didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, went in for my three-month appointment just to see how things were going. Three months prior, I, you know, I remember I had like an A1C of 6.2. Everything was great. Labs were all great. Went in and you know, they were going through stuff and my blood pressure was of concern. Um, and I can remember, you know, things like this just stick in my mind, but it was 200 over 180. Wow. And they, hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Incredible. And they were like, you're going to have a stroke. I, and I remember I was in the clinic for about three hours with them just trying to bring my blood pressure down. Um, and that kind of started down the tunnel of changes that eventually led to the the double organ transplant. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just like, you know, what's going on? And so they, you know, sent me to specialists um, just to try and see what was going on. I had a kidney biopsy because um, when they ran the, the labs, it showed that my kidney function was being affected. So they were like, does she have a blockage in, you know, one of the arteries or something to the kidney, uh, what they called renal hypertension at the time. Mm -hmm. So they did a biopsy. They did scans, um, just a lot of different things trying to figure out what was going on. And they really can't pinpoint exactly what was going on. Um, some of it was the, you know, long history of having diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, from childhood on, you know, and the ups and downs that I had, that definitely played a part in it, but it really wasn't, you know, 100% the reason. So I'm still one of those people, they don't know exactly what was going on, but that we couldn't get my blood pressure under control. And yeah. it took about six months. I think at one point I was on six different blood pressure medications. I had a patch. I had ones that I took in the morning, ones that I took at night. In addition to dealing with diabetes, diabetes medications. Now you had blood pressure medications. Right. All of that management. Yeah, so kind of yeah. adding that on top of things. And, and then this is common. This is very common for people with diabetes who have had mm -hmm. it a long time. You know, blood pressure, high to cholesterol, things like that kind of go hand in hand. Um, so it was just one of those things that, you know, I didn't think I realized, or when you get that diagnosis, you don't think about the future and, and what could potentially right, happen. Right. Um, and I think that's important, you know, that people think about that because during that six months where they were trying to get my blood pressure under control, my kidney function just started to decline. So you're talking diabetes, you're talking high blood pressure, and now you're talking essentially going into kidney failure. Exactly. You know, triple. It's incredible. Um, thank goodness you went in and went to the doctor. You know, that's one thing to always keep in mind is diabetes, as we talked about, 24-7, 365. But getting those checkups, go see a care and education specialist. When, when should a person do that? Do we need to be doing it yearly if a person has diabetes? When should a person, what schedule should they be on? Yeah, there's, you know, several important times that you should see a diabetes center, 
education specialist. One, of course, upon diagnosis. There is such a learning curve and so many ins and outs, and everybody is different. Each individual is very, very different. Um, so, you know, annually um, after that, so anytime you go in to see your provider on an annual basis, check in with your um, diabetes care and education specialist. Any changes that you have, so, you know, changes in medication, changes in lifestyle, uh, you know, changes in your insurance, you move, anything My like that. So went off to college. Exactly. Anything. Okay. Anytime. Um, Cause there's so many things that can affect, you know, what's going on. And then anytime that you're not meeting your treatment goals, goals, um, things change, you know, sometimes you have to change medications. Um, you may have to, you know, shift what you're doing as, you know, we age and as life stressors happen, you're going to have to make those changes. It's not like one and done. Okay, this is the dosage dosage that I'm going to be on, you know, for the rest of my life. There's lots of changes. So, yeah, there's four of key times that you really should see a diabetes care and education yeah. specialist. It's not a disease where you can just slap a Band-Aid on it and keep going. Yeah, right, exactly. Absolutely. Thank you to Melissa for sharing this amazing chapter of her life with us and for the reminder that chronic diseases and conditions need constant care and maintenance. For more information on chronic diseases and their care in Montana and diabetes specifically, check out diabetes.mt.gov. And be sure and tune in for our next podcast, which is the final installment with Melissa, where we learn about her transition from being a person with type 1 diabetes to a double organ transplant survivor. It's an amazing, captivating tale. Until next time, take care.